Hi everyone, today we're going to be dealing with scheduling pipe slopes in Revit. By default, Revit is not able to schedule this slope, so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out a work around it. This is going to be part one. We're going to build an analytical slope based on geometry and some parameters that we can extract from Revit. And then on part two, I'm going to show you how to build a schedule just like this where you can display your slope. See you in Revit. Hi everyone, this is Alex with BIM It Up where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems, and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. All right, so for this video, I'm using AutoCAD. I'm gonna draw a rectangle, and that rectangle is gonna be, let's say 36 inches in length, and in height is gonna be three inches. And this is representing the longitudinal section of a pipe, which has 36 inches in length, and three inches in outside diameter. Now I'm gonna take this pipe and I'm gonna rotate it based on this point clockwise, let's say minus 10 degrees, right? So this is a slope pipe. I'm gonna change the color of my pipe. I already created a layer for it called pipe. So it's a green pipe, the one that we use for storm in the course. And I'm gonna create a couple of reference lines from this point down. Let's create another one from this point left. And I'm gonna create another one from this point to this point. Just get rid of this, get rid of this. And now let's label things a little bit. So this point here, we know that's gonna be our top elevation. We know that this point here is gonna be our bottom elevation, which is this same spot. So let's just bring it here. It's gonna be useful to have it on this side. So we have the top elevation of the pipe and the bottom elevation of the pipe. We know that this is the diameter of the pipe, outside diameter of the pipe. So let's label it as such. And we know that this is gonna be the length of the pipe. Just for the sake of having some numbers in, let's do a few annotations here. So this dimension from this point to this point that's gonna be our length. We said it was gonna be three feet. That's good. Let's put in the layer for dimensions. I already created one for you, so it's a little bit clearer. And let's dimension our angles so we have an idea of what's going on. So from this point to this point, it's five degrees. And notice that since this line is parallel to this line, then this angle here has to be equal to this angle here. So let's dimension this angle. Also five degrees as expected. And now what I want you to notice is that, let me put it in a different color so that it's clearer. This, this, and this create a triangle. All right, so we have the triangle in yellow. And we also have another triangle in green formed by the pipe, right? By the bottom of the pipe and the first cross section of the pipe. And they're both rectangular triangles. So let's let's dimension that as well. Just so we have peace of mind that we know that this is 90 degrees. And we know that this is 90 degrees. Right? And now notice that those two triangles, this yellow triangle and this green triangle share the same hypotenuse, which is this line right here. So I'm gonna take advantage of that fact and let's brainstorm a little bit. If I dimension this here, right, from here to here, I know that this angle here from here to here is gonna be equal to this angle plus this angle, right? So the angle that I'm interested in is this one down here, right? Because that's the angle between the horizontal plane and our pipe. So that's the slope of our pipe. So let's go ahead and assign some symbols to this. And I already have the symbols here because I'm a super nice guy. I had them pre-made for you. So let's label this angle, the one we want. That's gonna be alpha, right? Then we're gonna have the large angle, beta. And then lastly, this other angle, it's gonna be gamma. And then we know that gamma, which is the angle that we want, 
because that's the angle between the horizontal plane and our pipe, that's the sloping angle of my pipe, is going to be equal to the larger angle, beta, minus this small angle here, alpha. So let's bring that here. We know this is true. Now let's call this distance here, let's say this one here, let's call it C. C, right? So this distance here is C. And then we know that this distance here is the length. So let's use a nomenclature that is intuitive. So L for length. And then our diameter, you guessed it, is going to be D. And then lastly, I'm going to designate the difference between top elevation and bottom elevation. I'm going to call it A. So A. And now let's go to PowerPoint. Okay, so from our little AutoCAD experiment, we had our triangles, right? We had the yellow triangle here and the green triangle here. Now on the green triangle, this one here, we know that the tangent of alpha is going to be the opposed side divided by the adjacent side. So it's D over L. If that's true, then alpha is going to be the arc tangent of D over L. In addition to that, we know that by Pythagorean theorem, C squared is going to be D squared plus L squared. That's also in the green triangle, right? If that's true, it follows that C is the square root of D squared plus L squared. And then on the yellow triangle, we have the angle beta. And then the sinus of beta is going to be the opposed side, which is A, divided by the hypotenuse, which is C. If that's true, it follows that beta is the arc sine of A divided by C which we know, since we know that C is the square root of D squared plus L squared, we can just plug it in down here. And now we have alpha in terms of known dimensions, and we have beta in terms of known dimensions. So finally, we know that gamma, this angle here, is the large angle beta minus the small angle alpha, right? But we already know beta is this expression here, and alpha is this expression here. So if we plug it in, this is what we obtain. And then now we just need to take it to Revit nomenclature, which is we know D is the outside diameter of the pipe. L is the length of the pipe. We know that top elevation of the pipe is this name. Bottom elevation of the pipe is this name. So that would be A right here. So we end up with this expression. And then this is the formula that we're going to use in Revit. So let's jump into Revit. 